Welcome to Talking Point with Stephen Taylor. It's good to have you along. And today I'm joined by Peter Dokes, mm. the legend. How are you, sir? Wow. I'm fine. I can't believe that you are here. I'm I thought, here. It, is I'm it a hologram? Here. Are you real? Hello? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming in. So tell me how, about how your journey began, where you grew up, where it all started for you. I started here in Cape Town. I was born in Cape Town. I grew up in Pinelands. Oh, wow. I keep on saying, you know, my, my friends in Athlone were a million miles away. We were separated by a fence, a train, and a park deck. Yeah, that's right. So I'm from the Cape Town. Ex funny cops of flactors, no? Yeah. So I went to school here, went to university, Cape Town, and then spent some time in London. And you paid for your own fees, right? I didn't pay. <laughs> I took a loan out to pay, oh. and it took a long time to pay that back, I must tell you. Okay. And it was like nothing compared to today. Yeah. I mean, the fact that the young people have got to start their lives with a quarter of a million rand debt Jeez. is just not on. We've got to solve that in yeah, some way. Yeah. yeah. So I must say it was, uh, it was very, it was very, nothing was easy, but it sort of was a very logical progression for me from, I had an English primary school, Afrikaans high school, English university. So I had the bilingualism thing. Um, and and uh, getting involved with theatre in in my second year at university, so that started up for a whole, a whole different development for me. Uh, then I went to London, thinking I could become an actor. But when you hear the English speak English, you know you can't can't compete with that, you yeah, know. Yeah. <laughs> so I sort of studied there for four years, and then uh, but then I just thought I can't be English. You know, I keep on saying trying to be English is as impossible as trying to be black. I, I have to come home. Yeah. So I came and joined the Space Theatre which was the first non-racial theatre in what 1973, in Long, off Long Street, oh, wow. between Bloom and Burton Streets. That was during apartheid? That was very much, and everything we did was against the law. Oh, wow. Well, we, we, it was against the law to allow black and white people to sit in the audience, we yes. broke the law. It was against the law to have black and white actors on stage, we broke the law. It was against the law to focus attention on hidden things like Robben Island or Nelson Mandela, we broke that law. Sure. It was illegal to be homosexual, we broke that law. It was illegal to be naked on stage, some of the others also <laughs> broke that law. So, no, I mean, it was just really, truly on the edge. And the thing that really saved our lives was that we s had a sense of humor. Yes. That the fear was there, but we laughed at the fear. We were it's not going to make it kill us, you know? Yeah. And I think that actually gave me what I have today is to, uh, I don't tell jokes, I can't remember the jokes, <laughs> which is a pity, I love jokes. But the truth is terribly funny, funny and I mean terribly funny. Um, and I think there's a big difference f to me between comedy and humor. Comedy is the joke, but humor is very personal. I mean, you laugh at something that's not actually funny, but you laugh at it because you're in charge of that fear. That's right. So, uh, so yeah, my journey started here, and here I am, still knocking around with my <laughs> with my CK number plate, not yeah. a CA one because oh it's wow. in our okay. uh, Swartland number that's plate. Right. Yeah. Ah. So tell me about your parents. They grew up obviously also during apartheid. Did they support what you were doing, or did they support apartheid, or how was it? Mm. How was their that role? Well, my mother was. She grew up in Germany. Oh wow. Uh, and she had to leave Germany in 1937 because she was Jewish. Oh. And she came to Cape Town and she met my father on the stage of the City Hall. They were playing t a two piano Mozart concert with the orchestra. And that's where my father and my mother met each other. Oh. So I always say I have to thank two people for being here. Amadeus Mozart and Adolf Hitler. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, and so music was the heartbeat in my family. And you know, when you really truly have music as your inspiration, you know, politics doesn't have a place there. Yeah. So my father, very Afrikaans, my Afrikaans grandmother, very political. Mm. I mean, I her cousin was the first National Party Prime Minister, Dr. D.F. Milan. Oh, wow. So there was that background there. My mother, who actually we only found out that she was Jewish after she was dead. She didn't even talk about it. So that oh. trauma was not something she even could talk through. Yeah. Um, so, did they support? My mother always supported. I mean, I remember when she used to drive us to the Eisteddfords, where we had to oh compete. Yes, yes. And my sister used to play the piano, I used to sing. And Ma always used to say to us, now enjoy it, or remember, enjoy it. And if you win, you get an ice cream. Uh -huh. And if you don't win, you get two ice creams. Oh yeah. Now that's a great philosophy of life. That is interesting. Because winning is not the issue here. Yeah. So I've been very happy with two ice creams for <laughs> lots of times in my life. You know, I mean, that really concerns me when I go to schools and I speak to the kids and the terror of failure at the age of 15. Yeah. And I say to them, 
but failure is like pimples you know you grow out of the pimples mm -hmm. but you've got to treat the pimples with the respect that they deserve in other words failure means you didn't get up that step now but you can if you work at the reason behind the fact that you couldn't get up that step mm -hmm. but now the kids are saying you failed you finished you haven't got another chance yeah I mean, I have still, every time I do my show, and I've done my show 7,000 times, I've been alone on stage. But every time is the first time and the last time, because that's it. I'm as good as my last meal. Um, so one has to try and fight that. I think this whole structure of t telling young people, you've got to succeed now, mm. otherwise you're a failure for the rest of your life, is mm. nonsense. It's, it's wrong. It's really wrong. It's like you're born to fail, basically. But there, but is, a, there a, is hope out there. It's also a terrible word. Failure just makes you feel like you want to run away. Yeah. You know, like the people say, are you nervous when you perform? Um, and I say, no, I'm not nervous. I'm excited. Excited means you can do it. Nervous means you can't do it. Yes. Look, the feeling is the same. Yes. You want to blah, blah, blah yeah. and run. <laughs> But all that, uh, you know, I'm not really a fan of n the negative. I find it goes nowhere. It just makes you sick. Mm. And, and optimism is really, truly th the belief that things will always be better than you expect. I see you have some famous friends. Tell me about that. Um, there's a lady, what's her name? Uh, Sophia. Oh, Sophia Loren. Yes. My beautiful Italian <laughs> girlfriend. She's this great movie star. I mean, really wonderful, extraordinary. And I fell in love with her when I was 11. Yeah. And I cut a and picture out. you wrote out. to her, right? I wrote her a letter. <laughs> I found her address. I mean, first of all, I had the pictures in my, on, my, on my wall, including a picture. It started off a picture of Hendrik Favut, oh, the okay. architect of apartheid, because I grew up in a South Africa yeah. where he was a God-given gift. Yes. Huh? Um, and then I found Sophia, and I stuck up on the wall next to Hendrik Favut, and then he fell off the wall. I think <laughs> just fell off. So Sophia saved my life. And then when I went to Europe the first time when I finished university, uh, I went just to look around the Northern Hemisphere. My mom said, you know, go and see where I come from. Yeah. But I wanted to go to Rome because Sophia Loren came from Rome. And I had a picture that I cut out of an Italian magazine of her leaning out of the window of her apartment, waving at the camera. And behind it was an ornate lamppost, and behind that was a ruin. So you know, in Rome, there are lots of ornate lampposts and lots of ruins. Yeah. So I walked around Rome with this picture, trying to find the <laughs> lamppost, and I found it. <laughs> there was a winner. So I wrote a letter to her, and I left it up there with a secretary, because Sophia was filming in France. Sure. When I got back to Cape Town, there was a letter for me from her. So oh, she wrote, personally. yeah. Sophia Loren. That's crazy. And then I wrote to her, and so she wrote to me, and she wrote me, and then we started writing to each other. Um, that was in, in the 60s. And then in the 70s, I met her for the first time in Paris. Um, and somehow it just became a friendship. Uh, we started talking to each other on the phone. I wrote movie scripts for her, which she said, I like them, but it's not the right story for me, but yeah. don't give up. Yeah. So there was no sentiment and no nonsense like, you know. Um, and w we had a documentary, they did a documentary about me last year called No One's Died Laughing. It's in the TV shops now, DVD shops. Yes, that's Nobody's right. died yeah. laughing. And Sophia's in the movie. Oh, wow. You know, t t we interviewed about our friendship and uh, yeah, so she's my Were well, you pal. starstruck the first time you met her? Oh, please. <laughs> I'm, I was totally starstruck. I mean, it's just so nice to know yeah. when young people are inspired by success and by the sexiness of beauty, you know. Um, and so that was, yeah, my famous friends. Uh, Desmond Tutu. <laughs> I am starstruck by Desmond Tutu. I f was totally in love with Nelson Mandela. Yeah. yeah. Um, we'll talk about that in a moment. Let's go to a break quickly. Uh, it's Talking Point with Stephen Taylor. We are in conversation with Peter Dorkes. We'll continue our chat next.